Hello and welcome back to another episode of Golf Forsaken Customs. In today's video, we will be showing you how a good day could quickly turn into a tragic and life and death situation. Here we are leaving the campsite in the morning. Today's starting out just like any other day. Um, packed up our stuff, decided on a route the night before, and uh, head on out in the morning when we're ready. Set up the GPS the night before, it gave us two routes. One was 500 kilometers and one was 180, so we took the 180 route. And for the first, I don't know, 70 kilometers, 60 kilometers, we were dealing with regular gravel roads and uh, tarmac roads. Um, everything was going fine. Uh, the road started to ascend, and uh, before you know it, we're in a full-blown logging road. And not too bad, uh, a few mud holes and that, but nothing we're not prepared for. You know, this is what we do. We, you know, we've driven all over Wells, we've driven multiple places solo and dealt with getting stuck and whatever else. So we're just having a good time. You know, we're not worried about it. We're up in bear country, not worried about that either. We're just enjoying the weather, enjoying the scenery, enjoying being with each other and just having a nice drive out. Doesn't really matter if we get to where we're going or not, but uh, we're up here for an adventure. So as you can see, we're, you know, collecting our shots, doing what we normally do. Gramps is running great. Everything's just going perfect. As we ascend the mountain higher, the roads get more and more interesting, the speed slows right down, and uh, the views just become phenomenal. As you can see, dealing with a lot of fallen timber and stuff on the road, anything small enough we cleared, and the last people drove straight over it, but uh, not what we do, not if you can make the effort and clear it up for the next person, whatever, it's gotta be done. Um, but as you can see, lots of dead fall. Some of it has been cleared before. Not sure if this trail pass has even been opened but um, yeah we're heading on up this mountain not realizing uh, that it's taken us right up over the mountain but uh, yeah just notice those puddles there they're all surrounded by yellow rings out here we were talking about it in the truck at the time uh, I'm not sure if it's coming out of the ground or coming out of the rain itself but it looks like sulfur or something like that um, if anybody knows anything about it but we've seen it all around BC and all over Alberta but nowhere else in the country so far but yeah Look at this place. Just a phenomenal view. Just poodling along. Everything's just going fine. You missed it. You wouldn't have up in what you do. That was the first black bear sight and I didn't have it on record. It wouldn't have been a very good one no, anyway, but just still. Got the back of That's cool. You seen a bear ever? Right? He's just right there, he's gonna get you. So pretty excited about our first bear sighting. We head on up the mountain, nothing to worry about, we're in the truck, right? Um, road's still okay, view's still beautiful, clouds are coming a bit, but nothing to worry about. I know mountain weather can change instantly, but today that's not what we're dealing with. Um, well, you'll see in a minute. Wow, this is a crazy road. Thank you, Jeepus. Yes. For taking us on the world's most crazy road. So there's bears, and avalanches, yeah. trees down, bits where you have to drive along the edge of a mountain, and then right round stuff that's fallen down. So as we get up higher, as you can see, we're now starting to get into a bit of snow. And I say snow, but I actually mean giant patches of ice. Um, they're only probably as long as the truck is, but very minimal a grip. It's you know it's pure ice. Um, I'm starting to drive through more and more patches of these. Not too much of an issue, you know. Gramps is a big four-wheel drive truck and that, and uh, yeah, it's nothing we haven't seen before. Uh, unless this route gets too much higher, we're not even thinking about turning around yet. Um, Gramps is just eating up the miles, and we're having a good time of it. That's until we get to this patch. There's some ruts in it. You can't quite see them in the video, but they're not as wide as the truck. I drove into the left-hand one and can't get out of it. Before you know it, we're in the ditch. So at this point, Gramps is completely suspended in this icy snow mess that's completely supporting it above the ditch and will not let me do anything but back down the hill. Ice and snow, anything underneath when you do dig down to it, it's just wet mud, so uh, yeah. This is getting interesting. We're on a mountain with bears. It's gonna get dark soon and we're stuck in the snow. Time for brute force and ignorance.
I can tell you now that the transmissions in these trucks really love this. That was not fun. The exhaust is now on the ground, so we're gonna have to take that off, put it on the hitch carrier. We're gonna have to turn around, this is bullshit. So yeah, we turn around. There's no way we're hanging around up here. I've just ripped the exhaust off the truck. Um, amongst other things, but we'll get into that in a minute. We need to get the hell out of here. We need to get off this mountain. We need to get things fixed. Um, like I said, we've dealt with this stuff before, but we've ne and we've been stuck on our own multiple times but well, we've never been in a situation where you could potentially die at night because of being stuck. You know, wherever we were in the UK, that's not gonna happen. It's all fine until somebody gets stuck. Just to top things off, we've now got a flat. Well, obviously it's not all smooth sailing. Here we are on the side of the mountain. Um, we have made it about 70 kilometers from where we got stuck in the ditch. And that was quite interesting trying to get it out. But it's amazing what you can do with a shovel and some teamwork. And we got it out. Now, the issue we just dealt with, as you've just seen, the all juice pumped a tire up from flat. Um, and obviously it wasn't flat when I pulled up, but uh, heard it leaking as we were driving. And sure enough, there's like an inch wide tear in it, uh, probably an inch and a half wide. And not a lot I can do about that, apart from I've crammed some sticks in it, rolled it to the bottom of the tire, we've managed to get air in it for now. So we're gonna give that a go. If not, we do have a spare, but of course it's not the matching size. And uh, yeah. Let's check out the carnage. Exhaust, mud guards, completely stoved in this door. But anyway, it's battle wounds. It's all good. Gramps are still running. We're still driving. We just got to try and get. We've got another 30 kilometers of this kind of stuff to go. It does sort of smooth out from here, but there's still a few rough patches. But we got to see if this repair holds first. And I am not sure. But I really want to get down off of this mountain before it gets dark because uh, we were up here, it's the first time we've seen all type of bears and stuff and then we get stuck less than half a kilometre from where we saw the bears. So uh, yeah, we've got to get out of here and uh, we've got to do it quick because time's getting on. But yeah, keep them calm and we will make it. We always do. So hopefully we'll catch it a bit. If not, we've been eaten by bears. Oh, the transmission sounds lovely now. Nope. So you just joined us again. We are limping back on that tow, even though it's not holding air. It's gonna get us far enough to get it pumped up again, and then we're all driving a bit further. I don't want to change the tire on this mountain. We're gonna be compromised position if we're out here in the dark. We need to get off of this mountain, then we'll deal with the problem. It's not that bad. If we've got to pump it up two or three times, we've got time to do that. Well, we just need to get out of here. So that's what we're doing. You can just about not hear it now because we are losing pressure. And uh, with every rotation of the tire, psh, 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 and we are losing air pretty quickly. But I'm pretty sure we can make it. And there's only one way we're going to find out, I guess. So thanks for coming with us once again. If we don't make it, but I'm sure we'll catch you in a bit when we've got off this mountain and uh, worked out what we're going to do about a new tire. Okay, one more pump up. We've got five kilometers left to go until we get to the nearest gravel road, which will then take us back to somewhere. But uh, at least once we're off the mountain, I can think about changing the wheel over, and it's not ideal because it's not exactly the same size, but it should be close enough that we're just gonna have to hope for the best. We don't have much option at the moment. So yeah, and people were asking me why I wanted to bring a trailer load of spares. This is exactly why. But yeah, on the good note, we're gonna make it at least off the mountain, and uh, then we can deal with uh, everything else tomorrow morning, hopefully. Uh, I don't even know what time it is now, but it's getting on. 
Sun's just just going behind the clouds in the mountain there. I'm being eaten alive by mosquitoes out here. But uh, yeah, we're gonna make it off the mountain. Gonna have to have look for a set of used tires or something, or a used tire, or whatever I can find, because I'm not buying new ones, because this happens. 600 bucks on a set of tires, and then this happens, that would suck. But hi, right, I've gotta get back in the truck before I get eaten to death. And I'll catch you in a bit. that's going to be it for another episode as you see we're alive still um, next few videos are going to be obviously we spread the ashes now we're back with family we're back in Drumheller we are going to be going back to BC but Emma's mum's still here at the moment we did have her stay with us in the truck for the last three three nights, three nights. Yeah. Um, I slept in the tent out the back and the girl slept in the truck but uh, managed to take her to a few spots in BC she'd never been mm -hmm. before and took her up to Edmonton on the way back mm -hmm. down here so we're hanging around for the next few days until she flies back and uh, yeah, back in beautiful Drumheller, what can I say? Um, been loving BC, haven't we? Oh yes. Um, I don't know why everyone's got such a big deal about us being outside in the woods with bears and stuff. Like we know what we're doing, we're, <laughs> we've got it covered. And if we don't, at least we got eaten somewhere where we're happy to be. <laughs> but at any rate, once again, huge love. We'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers.